How you doing everybody? Today we're gonna to be talking about warranty and how you should go about giving warranty to your customers. Welcome back everybody. So like I said, we're gonna be talking about warranty and how to set it up for your business, whether you're an auto, uh, auto repair shop or mobile mechanic, or you're working at your garage, it doesn't matter. You always wanna have a warranty for your customer because they're gonna ask you about it. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and go to automechanicclub.com and pick up a hat, a shirt. It helps with uh, support the channel. So thanks so much for that. Leave me a comment if you guys have any other questions. This question that I'm making this video on was actually from one of my loyal viewers. They asked me to talk about warranty and how I go about providing that for my customers. So there's gonna be a couple of things that we wanna talk about with warranty guys. So this is the overview of the whole entire topic. Uh, warranties are very important, especially when you're working on people's cars because they're always gonna to wanna to know whether or not they got uh, a warranty because warranties are a normal thing for automotive car, uh, automotive, uh, because they get them from the dealer. They also wanna make sure that they get one from you uh, because a lot of these repairs are very, very expensive. So they wanna make sure they have a guarantee or some sort of refund policy if you have one, okay? so. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. So I'm gonna give you guys what my warranty is and I'm gonna explain why I do it like that and I want you guys to also know how to prevent warranties from coming back. Okay, that's one of the most important aspects of this entire video is how to keep warranties from co uh, coming back into your shop. Okay, because we don't want warranties. We wanna make sure that the car gets fixed pro properly the first time and the customer leaves and they don't have to worry about their car and they come back whenever they need maintenance or another repair. Uh, completely different from the repair that you did before. Okay, so uh, so the first thing is what my warranty is and why I set it, like, set it up like that, okay? So the way that I have my warranty set up is very basic. It's for, it's annually, okay? And it's, it's between, and then this also depends on the part, okay? So it depends on the part, but for most parts, most parts companies are either gonna give you uh, a 20,000 mile warranty or six or 12 months. Now, if it's a if it's a, um, a different like a like a hard part like a radiator or or a um, let me see a radiator or a core um, like a battery like that's a hard part right those normally will you'll have like 24 month warranties even 36 months it depends but for the most part it's going to be between six and 12 months warranty on most sensors, electrical components, and stuff like that. Like, uh, yeah, and non-wear items, basically. Um, so six to 12 months. Me, I like to do 20,000 miles. And the reason why I like to do 20,000 miles because most of my customers will drive between anywhere between 10 and 20,000 miles in the year. So after the one year, um, or, you know, six to 12 months, and after that, that mileage, I'm, I'm crystal clear, okay? So that's, that's normal. The only time I ever do like a six month warranty on stuff is when parts, that I replace take me longer than four hours to replace. If it takes me longer than four hours to replace, I wanna make sure that I get some money coming in so that I don't spend all day replacing a part that I know is gonna take me four or five, six hours to, re to replace. So I keep that warranty a little bit lower just because if it fails, I'm gonna be out a full day worth of cash, okay? so. And that's pretty rare. Most parts that you're gonna be replacing are between two and three hours. If you're gonna do anything pa past that, like four to, to eight hours, it'll be like a, a timing belt or something like that, that most of those parts are not gonna fail uh, in 20,000 miles. It's always gonna be like sensors or stuff like that. But if the sensor's in a really weird spot, does it take you four hours or more to do, like a starter, you gotta re re tear out, tear out the, the intake and then, and then like, you know what I'm saying? Like take out the, like a Toyota Tundra or something like that, the intake has to come off. That takes a long time, so you want to make sure that you cover your, your time if, if it does come back. Okay, so that's how I set it up. Six to 12 months or 20,000 miles for most things that I do. Okay, that's, that's, that's what I do. Now, I want you guys to keep this warranty in writing on the ticket that you give your customer that with the receipt, they sign it and they have to read the warranty. Warranty has to be present there and they have to sign the paperwork with date. And I want you guys to have that present in the beginning of the whole entire ticket, the bill, whatever it is. Because whenever they leave, they should have read it and they should have been cool with it. So if, if they come back in seven months and the warranty is only six months, you're like, hey bro, sorry, it's, it's seven months. And you could cut them a little slack, feel it out, okay? 
but for the most part, stick to it. Okay, you don't wanna you don't wanna take it you don't wanna get taken advantage of by people because people will take advantage of you if if they can. Okay, so be really careful with that. Stick to the warranty. Keep it in your paperwork. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because the the the, the loyal subscriber that asked me this question, he had a situation where the customer came in for a repair, the car broke down, they took it to another shop, the shop fixed it, they gave him a bill for $500, then the, the customer came back to him and said, your part failed, now I want you to pay for that repair. It's 500 bucks, here's a bill, give me my money. And then and in, in him, on his uh, invoice, it said, warranties are only covered in this shop. You have to tow it into us for us to fix it. Now some shops, they're nationwide, like Pep Boys or Firestone or the chain shops like Midas or whatever, but they are nationwide, so if so long as it's repaired at Midas, they'll be able to repair it at no cost, and the warranty is honored, okay? But it, it, like if you're just a mom and pops or you're more mechanic, make sure that you put that in writing so that people understand that you have to come in to your shop. Now luckily for him, he covered his butt, the guy tried to sue him for $500, you know how people are, they just try to scare you with lawsuits, but it, it, that's like a small claims court and come on bro, like it says right there, you have to come back, why you tow it in? You know, unless you're like 300 miles away, like maybe, but even then, like, come on bro. So, um, so yeah, keep that in writing, okay, make sure that you guys put everything in writing. Now, if you guys are wondering what an invoice with a warranty setup looks like, you can always find them on Google but I will put a PDF in the description below for you guys to see the one that I use, okay? So you guys can have that and you guys can just copy paste on your invoice and you're good to go. The one I did was written by a contract lawyer. It's solid, it's ironclad, nobody can mess with it. So long as the people follow the instructions and the warranty, it, it'll get honored. If it don't, if they don't, I don't get sued. I mean, I, I can get sued, but for the most part, I'll be cool, okay? Um, so yeah, download it below, PDF. So yeah. Now, how to prevent warranties from actually coming back? Now, this is a big one, guys. It's, it's, a warranty is pretty much a comeback, okay? And for most comebacks, you're all, it's always gonna be because two main reasons, okay? The first reason is because you put a shitty part into the car. I put a Chinese part into it, and you, you knew better, but the customer didn't wanna pay the, the $300 for the correct part that you would wanna put in, and they, they found one on, on, on on Google for 120 bucks and they wanted you to throw that in and now they've broken down because it was an engine part and they came back in and now they want you to warranty it guys I always advocate for you guys to find the absolute best parts so this doesn't happen so you pre so you limit the amount of risk you're taking now if you guys are cheap and you guys want to make sure that it's the cheapest possible price for your customers then you're gonna run into a lot of warranty issues because parts that are made cheap they're not, they're made cheap for a reason because they're not made with the best quality parts. So they're gonna fail sooner than a, be a better part that's made with quality parts, with better materials, better plastics, better electrical, whatever it is, and they actually last, last longer and they've been R&D'd, they've been tested and they know the longevity of it, okay? And the way that you know whether a part is good or not, look at their warranty. If they're giving you a one month warranty for a part, you pretty much know that it's probably not the best part. Okay, but if you got a warranty of three years for a sensor, you're pretty sure that the sensor is gonna last you three or three years or longer, okay? Because they give you like the minimum. Most most companies will give you like the most minimum, okay, for parts. So understand that. So you want to minimize the uh, the risk of having warranty or comebacks by getting the best part best part possible. Obviously, you always want to use dealer parts because dealer parts are designed and made for that car, but. You know, there's a lot of aftermarket companies that make just as good as part and a lot cheaper than the dealer parts. I, I don't get dealer parts for the most part unless like Worldpack has it or another one of my parts stores, uh, you know, just has dealer parts. Sometimes they do. A lot of parts stores will buy bulk like when, um, when like uh, warehouses for like Toyota, whatever, liquidate, they go and buy the whole entire stock and then they, they take out the part number from the dealer and they put their own part number on there. It comes in the, in, the Toyota part, in the Toyota box, they just don't have the part number on there. It's very common for that to happen. So for me, I'd rather do that than put in like a Chinese part. But if they don't have that, just go with the best quality part that they have that's aftermarket. And you guys know, you guys know, like you guys know, Dorman makes bad parts because you guys have dealt with it. I mean, if you guys are in, this, in the industry and you've dealt with this 
uh, long enough, you know what parts are good and you know what parts are not. I would never put a Dorman engine part into a customer's car. Why? Because Dorman doesn't make good parts. They make good hard, like, hard parts, like uh, interior parts. Like I would put a window regulator into a customer's car. Why? Because it's not gonna cause them to break down. If the motor goes out, no big deal. They just put the window up and they're like, hey man, my, my window doesn't go back down. Oh, okay, no problem. The part was just, it was probably bad. No problem, just come back in. But it's not gonna cause them to break down. It's not gonna give the customer that extra inconvenience. Okay, so I would never put a cheap part into, a, into the engine of the car that's gonna cause them to break down. I always put the best parts possible when it comes to undercar and engine. Interior, window regulators, knobs, like switches for the, for the headlights, whatever it is, whatever. Put some doorman in there. If it breaks, come back in. We'll, we'll go ahead and take care of it. Engine parts, I don't deal with it because the car can either overheat, the engine could have a catastrophic failure or, or, or something of the sort. So be really careful with stuff like that whenever you do deal with engine parts, okay? Um, so that's the one of the reasons why you're gonna have a lot of warranty comebacks because you, you're using crappy parts. Now guys, again, you guys have to get into the mindset of this is my rate, this is what I put into the car because I know better than you. I'm the expert, the customer doesn't know anything, they come to you for a reason, so they want, they, they, obviously customers wanna do the cheapest ever. So they're gonna go on Google and type in, you know, um, radiator hose for this car and they're gonna be like, oh, I, I found one for 20 bucks but you're charging me 200. Why is it so much more with you? Because bro, I'm putting better parts in it. Okay, so you have to know what to say to your customer when they when they come back to you with this stuff. I already know what they're gonna say. Hey man, I found a better part. I mean, I found a part that on eBay for 20 bucks. And I'm like, okay, well, that part is Chinese. It's probably gonna fail in a week. I'm putting in a KYB shock and strut. It's probably gonna last you another 80,000 miles to 120. I'm not gonna put that part in. And you have to stick with it. You have to deny people whenever, whenever they don't wanna do how you wanna do your work. Because when they when a part fails, they're not gonna blame themselves. They're gonna blame you and what's gonna happen. You're gonna get upset because you told them and you're gonna say that, you're gonna be, I told you. No, you didn't tell me anything. I'm the customer, I'm always right. And then you're gonna be over there fixing the car and then you're gonna be all mad and you're gonna be like bitter, okay? Stick, stick to your guns. You always wanna make sure that you tell the customer what they need, not the other way around. They don't know what they need. The customer always comes to you because you're the expert, okay? So that's number one, parts. Second part, the second reason why you're always gonna have warranty comebacks is because labor. Labor is a big thing, guys. If you install a part improperly, you're gonna have comebacks, and it happens all the time. I did it when I was a younger mechanic, and I was in a rush, and I thought I knew everything, and I was like, oh yeah, I don't have to torque down anything. And then I, and then I would break stuff, like micro cracks, and then the, the part would break a week later. Okay, so labor does affect warranties because if you have a mechanic that is not doing their job properly not talking things properly if they're not uh, doing the processes properly they're not you know they're they're like we, we, we all do it sometimes you know it doesn't make sense to have to remove this whole entire thing to be able to get underneath something to get to a one bolt when you can kind of just like loosen things up move it up a little bit loosen that bolt up and then you'll be able to take the whole assembly out okay sometimes you don't need to remove the whole entire thing but i i know that there's a lot of mechanics that will like bend like stuff completely out of the way weakening and, and the structure of that component they repair they repair whatever they bend everything back and now there's a stress stress fact fracture on that component causing it to prematurely fail okay you want to have mechanics that have good integrity and they know how to do processes so that they repair the car properly and that they know hmm maybe i shouldn't bend this all the way because i've seen it break before so let me take it easy on this component Okay, so that, that you, be careful with the labor as well. If you got a mechanic, and the, and the way that you can tell guys, the only way you can tell whether a mechanic is doing a good job and, or a bad job is by counting how many comebacks they have a month. And this is, like, again, if you guys are not doing stuff like this, if you guys don't have processes in place for you guys to account how many cars a mechanic works on and how many comebacks he has based on, the, on those cars that he worked on, and you don't have percentages for this type of stuff, you're never gonna know, and you're always gonna be going off your head, and, and it's gonna be all skewed. So you wanna be able to count how many cars a mechanic works on. Let's just say he works on 100 cars a month. And if he has anything below, I wanna say, if he has anything below an 85% success rate with cars, like if, if he has, okay, if, if he's working on 100 cars and, and more than 
more than 85, or they, okay, so, okay, hold on, hold on. He's working on 100 cars, 85 of them come back, or 85 of them are, he's fixed properly, but then 15 of them uh, are not fixed properly, like you have a comeback, and they just say the comeback, comebacks cost you a lot of money, then, like, or let's just say the comebacks don't cost you any money, it was just like a, you know, oversight of the part failed or whatever, then that's okay. I want to say 85 to 90 percent, okay, especially for B and A mechanics. C mechanics, they're gonna just mess everything up. They're gonna have like a, a crappy comeback rate. So a, a B and A mechanics between 85 to 90 is like acceptable. Okay, that's fine. Now if they're getting into the 70s, 60 percent, you know, rate, you gotta step back and be like, what is going on? What are you doing wrong? when you're fixing cars are you on your phone are you not paying attention are you just being really rough with the car are you not putting parts in properly are you not following the processes are you just being just are you overlooking things because you're just not paying attention to your work are you not getting enough sleep what's going on that's when you have to ask the mechanic man man I, it might be because of him the warranties are coming back maybe because of him so you have to be able to track this stuff and be able to, to really assess things on a methodical and analytical level, okay? So for you to understand what is going on with, with your business and be able to prevent warranties from coming back because warranties, don't, they, they, don't, they don't pay you. So you don't want that. You want to have cars in the shop that are making you money. You don't want to have comebacks all the time because that ruins the flow of everything and it ruins your bottom line. So be really careful with that. Um, and the only way I found, guys, to, to fix that Unfortunately, is to bring people back down and and then and then and then rein them back in. Okay, I, I mentioned in in, in uh, the video that I made the other day of uh, A, B, and C mechanics. B mechanics, or the way you move up between C, B, and A, is by having a master tech that that slowly gives you work depending on what your level is. So he'll give you a little bit more work, and then if you if you do good with that one and you're not messing anything up, then he gives you a little bit more, then a little bit more, then a little bit more. Next thing you know, you're a B mechanic, then you you know you get a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Now if if you if you give him a little bit and he, and he messes up a couple times, then you know he's not ready for that yet. So you have to bring him back, get him more experience on what he's doing with the basics. Then when he, when he matures a little bit more as a mechanic, then you, you can maybe try him out again and see if he's ready for that work, okay? So you have to reel back in your mechanics and figure out what, what's going on with them, whether it's external uh, and they're just messing up because they're just not paying attention, or if it's just their skill level, they're not ready for that type of work yet. So that's how you assess whether or not you wanna rein back a mechanic or just fire him complete, completely. Sometimes guys, mechanics are just not good they don't they don't warranty that position so sometimes they won't want to take a pay cut they won't want to come back down to a b-level c mechanic okay so they'll be like what? no I, what do you mean i was doing timing belts and now i'm doing just basic undercar no i don't i want to i want to make some money i want to make i want to do bigger work sorry bro you're not ready yet what do you want me to do it's not my fault like it's not my fault you can't every time you touch a car something breaks on it and i gotta i gotta fix it and we got customers coming back, warranty work, and then they gotta get the car towed. You're messing up my, my reputation, bro. I can't, I can't do this. You have to assess things properly, guys. So, so assess that, okay? Warranty work is something that you don't want, obviously, but you do have to provide it for your customer because your customer wants to make sure that if something happens, you'll be able to take care of it. And for the most part, guys, a lot of this stuff, especially if you're mom and pops, you're a mobile mechanic shop, a lot of it is based on what you think is it's good. Sometimes, like uh, so for the most part, I don't have a, a like. If a if a customer comes back and they're a good customer, I don't ask any questions. I just take care of for them. Why? Because most most of my customers were amazing. Okay, and most of my customers weren't trying to screw me over. A lot of my customers were come back like were, were customers that were already established. I had, they were part of my clientele, so they were coming back and they were cool with it. I took care of them because they never gave me any hassle. They trusted me and, and I took care of their problem because I wanna make sure that I take care of my customer. So a lot of this stuff does come down to what you think is right. Understand that some people are gonna to try to take advantage of you. You don't let that happen. That's why you have everything writing. You have everything contract, you know, why is correctly done and you don't let people take advantage of you. But if you have a customer that's been coming to you for three years, they never give you any hassle whenever you recommend things and they just trust you with everything and they just pay you whatever you're, whatever you're worth, and then they have a problem, you take care of it. You take care of it. You take care of their tow, you take care of the warranty work, you give it back to them with a washed car and you apologize profusely. Hey man, really sorry, 
our oversight, which took care of everything for you. Um, this, is, this never happened before. It was just one of those things. It happens. Yeah, okay, no problem. I, I get it, Nestor. It, sh it, uh, st stuff happens. So let's just go ahead and take care of it and move forward. Boom, you're done. Okay, but it's, it's also based on what you think is good. I mean, if a customer is like a brand new customer and they're just giving you, you know, BS from the beginning and then um, they were just abusing the brakes and then next thing you know, the brakes are squeaking a week later, you're like, bro, like, it's, stop, stop. Hit. I told you, you have to wear the brake pads in, relax. So assess it and understand, you know, uh, understand the dynamics of a customer relationship and know when to take care of your customer and know when to lay down the law and say, it's out of warranty. Sorry, I can't help you on this one. But yeah, that's it. Hit the like button. Let me know what other questions you guys have. Like I said, this question was from one of my viewers that asked me this and wanted me to go over the warranty aspect of the entire automotive industry. That's how I do it. If you guys have another way of doing it, let me know in the comment section below. Warranty does depend a lot, of the, a lot of, about the part and the labor it takes to repair it and how you're feeling in that time and that day and whether or not you want to be nice to your customer or you want to just say, hey, bro, it's not my fault. It's on you. Um, so a lot of it does come down to the actual shop itself. If you're doing a big chain shop though, it has to be in stone. Your warranty has to be in stone and cannot waver. Unless you got a customer that's coming, for you, coming to you for 10 years, they're out of warranty by a week, then you take care of them, okay? Have some, have some nuance when it comes to warranty. Sometimes you gotta just help out your customer, okay? Especially if they're great, if they're great customers. But if they're dicks, screw them, they're out of warranty. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what else you guys want me to talk about. Go to automechanicclub.com, pick up a shirt, a hat, it will help support the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Yeah, move around. It's go time. Yeah, guys. Today I'm talking about, about this racket. Yeah, see this guy? Swing <laughs> back. Again, just fuck around, move around. It's go time. Go time. Yep.